similar DNA. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the big campaigns for them that they really shouldn't use because it's not practical. Also, like the price of animal testing is like a lot more than some of the alternatives. So hmm. what's that? Just like the unscheduled DNA synthesis cost about uh, thirty-two thousand, while a lot of the other alternatives cost eleven thousand or less. So okay. it's more the t the cost of the tests, not the cost of the animal yeah. or the upkeep or yeah, that upkeep. thing. Oh, okay. And who pays for that? Um, we do with our taxes. Even the cosmetic part. I pay. I pay for Mary Kay to do testing on animals. <laughs> I would say probably more the consumers in that respect because they're paying for their products and from that there's probably the profit or however they divide up their profit would go towards testing on animals. So maybe not paid for by taxes or anything, but paid for passed on the cost of yeah. the product then is what you're saying. But yeah. the USA does spend sixteen billion dollars annually mm -hmm. for government run research and tests on animals. So even though maybe Mary Kay's, we aren't paying for for any government-led institution that is testing, it's $16 billion annually of taxpayers' money. So it is costly if you think about it. Lauren, you mentioned just a minute ago the alternatives, that perhaps there were other options that didn't cost as much. And I know we said like there are companies that just choose to not include those products in their ingredients. But what are, what other alternatives are there? Um, there's a list of alternatives, like the um, studies of human populations, clinical research, test tube research, computer-based techniques. Uh, you can test on tissue cultures or um, imaging methods like the CT scan or the MRI. And then you can do human-based if it's like a volunteer. Mm -hmm. Computer-based. We're testing on computers? It's near and dear to my heart. <laughs> oh, we t we're testing on computers? That's actually something yeah. I was going to bring up. Um, a whole other kind of spectrum of animal testing is okay. um, like dissection at schools and stuff. Right. There's like a whole business for that where breeders breed specifically to go to the schools. The animal will just like, they will euthanize the animal and then that will go to the school and they can like do the little dissection thingies they do in like science classes and with that I think it's more um, of just I don't know how to explain it but it's like a different business and I was just gonna say that with that it's just different. So you're talking like breeding frogs so that they can be dissected in science classes or yeah. beetle pigs or whatever else? Yes. Okay. There's there's and also like for the computer base, there's like virtual animals that you can like, yeah, you that's can like virtually. So we're not actually testing the computer, we're doing tests yeah. on the computer. So they've probably that makes so much done it on an animal before, okay. but then. I'm, I'm big for computer rights, so I don't, wanna, <laughs> I don't want to see like, the technology guy, that's what I do. Okay, nice. So they can run simulations then is what you're saying, Lauren, on the yeah. computer yeah. to see how things, you can do some testing environments yeah. on the computer based on knowledge that we've already got and see what the results would be. Okay. How do you feel about dissection in the classroom? Because you've probably all done it. How does that kind of tie in with your view on animal testing? I didn't really know much about it until I heard of it when I was researching. I mean, I know about dissection, but I didn't know about how there was like a whole business for that and how it was like part of animal testing. And I would say that I would like to see more of the alternatives of with the computers. And I saw one that was like, clay-based ones they were like similar to the animals and I'd like to see more of that in schools rather than the whole breeding and then killing of the animals. So where do they get the animals for that? They have breeders that breed the animals specifically just for them. And then they euthanize them like companies. <coughs> they do you think it's a cost difference that the, why we haven't gone to like the virtual reality animals? Because that just seems like that would that would be the smart route to go because well, it's not something you have to keep purchasing. Well, let, right? me, let me flip that coin over though. If I'm going to have a heart bypass, I want a surgeon who has worked on a heart before. I do not want a surgeon who's worked on an Apple computer on a heart before. <laughs> like I, I want the guy who's been in a chest and has worked on a heart and maybe we replaced it with a pig valve or whatever it is that I need, need to have done. I kind of want somebody who's got real world experience 
Now, I don't know if his dissection of a frog in eighth grade yeah, chemistry class or whatever translates, but if you're going to be doing a heart bypass on me or somebody I love, I want to make sure you've been in and done a heart bypass on somebody like that before. So isn't it important to have that experience that you can't necessarily get on a computer? Yeah, and also, like, in a high school setting, it probably draws more attention, or, yeah, it makes you more focused and it draws more attention on the, because you're actually doing it to the, are you saying high school students get unfocused sometimes? Like, <laughs> on that hard to Well, I think, like, I personally did not take AP bio whenever I was in high school because of the dissection issue. Hmm. But it was because we had to dissect cats. And I I'm sorry, you say cats? Cats. Hmm. Yes. And so I, I didn't even take the class. Um, so, and I also had done some research before, and I talked to a couple of vets. And at that time, this is a long time ago, because I graduated in 91, so. <laughs> but at that time, um, the vets that I spoke to say that they donated a lot of the animals that they euthanized there mm -hmm. to be used um, for those purposes. And whether or not the owners of those pets knew is kind of up in the air. You know what I mean? Like, so let's say, you know, my beloved cat died or whatever and then I gave it to you know the vet to dispose of or to bury or whatever um, some of those vets would then take it and use it for or you know give it to somebody to dissect without I feel like knowledge. like if they're voluntarily giving it to the um, mm -hmm. vet to do that that they should kind of know that that could be like an option but mm -hmm. if they would want to bury it themselves or right. like cremate it or something then that would be fine. <laughs> so we're okay with dissecting cats as long as the owner has voluntarily donated the cat for dissection. So for dissection. I mean, I think that's much. like cadavers. A person yeah. will, you know, yeah. volunteer yeah. their body for after mm -hmm. they so die. Like their body for, to science. So I think mm -hmm. that's okay as long as it was volunteered mm -hmm. by, you know, 